Hi, Andrew Becker today. Ah yes, this is becoming to be an annual event. Nah, what can I say? But I'm making more modifications on my CNC. I know some people cringe when I say that the tool I mostly use in my shop is my CNC. In fact, I carve tons of stuff with it and especially now with this special router bit. I will talk about it in details at the end of the video. All those modifications started last October after another dead palm router. Three broke down last year. Oh yes, that's the reason why I bought a new 2 horsepower 3 phase DC spindle. And this is the first modification I'm going to do. My first challenge was to find an 8mm bolt. As you may know, around here it's not that easy. So I'm beginning by modifying the bolt for the included spindle support. Now that I have some modified bolts, I have to cut a piece of aluminium to make a new back support for the Z-axis. To make the holes at the same place as the original back, I stick it on my aluminium and use it as a guide to drill the holes. Since my new backing is bigger than the original, I move the original back down to make the last holes. Ah, but I'm not done. I still need to drill holes in the new spindle support that was included in the kit. After tapping the holes, I can put my new support on the aluminium piece that I've just drilled and mark where I need to drill the holes. I also need to mark the placement of those holes on the support, so I can drill bigger holes in the base to have space for some bolts heads. I know, this was not very clear, so maybe now you understand it a little bit more. Next, I can bolt all of this together, uh, but I don't take any chances and add a nut over the bolts. When all the wheels are in place, I can install my new support. Uh, but this spindle is much heavier than my palm roller. 1.2 kg for my router compared to 4.2 kg for my new spindle. But since this is a three-phase DC motor, I need to solder a special connector to power it. And now I can test it for the first time. Okay, for now the controller is on my workbench and I plug it. And right from the get-go, I'm super happy because it's super quiet. Yes, it's turning at full speed right now. Can you hear it? <laughs> For a better comparison, I will start my palm rotter. Now I'm going to use this board that was lying around in the shop to put my new controller on the wall. The first thing I do is cut one side of the shiplap. I reuse this strip and glue it back on the other side. This way, the other shiplap will disappear. The next day, I'm ready to install this in place. The first thing I do is unscrew four screws from the wall. Put this board where I want it to be. 
and mark the placement for those screws. Now it's super easy to see where I need to drill the holes. Then I can screw the controller on this board. And since I don't want the wires to move, I screw this piece of wood on top of them. Then I can screw everything to the wall. After putting the power cord in all the small clips that I've printed, I can plug the power to the spindle. Since it's water cooled, I need to put the hoses in place. Then I can use the new clips I've just printed and clip the hoses to them. Both hoses go to the floor. Now I just need to fill up this bucket. When it's three quarter full, I can put the pump inside. Now you just saw the water going inside the spindle for the first time. The water is returned to the bucket and it's this water that keeps the spindle cool. Now I can put the bucket in place and plug the pump in the outlet that is controlled by the system. Now I can try this to see if it works. Okay, I didn't do any modification on the XYZ axis, so everything works normally. And if I turn on my new controller and send the command to start the spindle, it starts. In 20 seconds, it will be at maximum speed. And now I can try it. Like I said at the beginning, this was in October. So I'm carving a bunch of small Christmas ornaments that I will sell at the Christmas fair. Yes, I did a bunch and here you can see my new carving router bit that I've received from Italy by the Fraser Tool Company. And now with my water-cooled spindle, I am able to carve a bunch of stuff for my Christmas presents. As a matter of fact, I think I carved close to 100 hours before Christmas. This was pretty useful. So when René and I were working on the wooden padlocks that we sold, the CNC was carving Christmas ornaments. Two months later, I'm making more modifications. In fact, those are my biggest modifications yet. I begin by taking my CNC apart. When I say taking it apart, it's really taking it apart. From the electronics up to all the mechanical parts. And just like last time, since it's on its side, I will replace all the inserts that I didn't replace last year. At least for the first four rows. This will be perfect. As a matter of fact, the first four rows are the ones I use the most. I also removed all the electronics that were on the small shelf at the left of the CNC. Now I will move it just here at the top of the board. The first thing I put there is the power supply. And just like on the shelf, this is held in place with some Velcro. One of the things that was bugging me on my old setup was that the fans uh, look like that. I do a better job this time. And now that the new fans supports are screwed in place, I can screw all the motors controllers. Next, I screw the Arduino in place. Just under it, I screw the module that I've made. Uh, you will see it later on. And this stayed like that for six long weeks. <laughs> yes, I made another project during this time. But now I'm ready to continue. And the first things I make are my new longer supports.
I begin by cutting some aluminium. Using the original support, I mark where I need to drill the holes in my new supports. I stick them together with double-sided tape and drill all the holes in one shot. Then I can cut the Z-axis rail that I bought, which is longer than the original, and put it in place. And it's here that I notice that I drill the holes for the Y motor to I. I drill them lower, but it's only later on that I noticed that they were not even low enough. I also add a new back support to hold the wire chain. Uh, yes, because with those new water hoses, it's becoming too heavy. I also did this support for the X-axis driving nut. And here's how the two motors of the Y-axis look like now. But I need two supports at the front. So after figuring out where to drill the bolts holes, I drill them. Now I need to make a support for this nut. I will come back to this later when I'll redo them. But I still have to drill two holes in the side plates. Since it's now higher than the original design, I'm a little bit scared that it can move. So I'm going to add some lateral supports. The first thing to do is to remove one corner at the bottom. With this out of the way, I can drill the holes in those supports. Now that I have four identical supports, I need to modify the two at the back to make space for this nut. Now I need to put the nut for the Z-axis. But please do not use a nut like this one. Later on, you will see the mess it made. Yes, it's working, but not for long. Now I need to take it apart and spray black paint on it. I spray two coats. Now I just need to wait for the paint to dry. When it is, I reassemble it and put the CNC in place. I plug in all the motors and try it to see if it's still working. Okay, the X and Z axis work super well. <sighs> but the Y axis doesn't work at all because of those two bolts. I'm forced to bring it back to the workbench. I remove the front support and drill new holes for the motors for the third time. But with this lower, the nut supports that I made are too small. I need to make new ones. I put them in place and mark where I should drill their holes. These are my new nut supports. And with lower drive screws, it's now super easy to move. This will be perfect. Now I can put it back in place. After recalibrating the CNC, I can fill back the pipes with water and make a test. Everything is working number one. And here's the module I made to check if the pump is working. I can see the water temperature, the ambient temperature, and the amount of liters per minute that the pump is circulating. It also has a little graph for the water's temperature. 
It also sees if I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. Yes, because before that, the only way I could see if the carving was finished was by checking with one of my cameras. But now this module sends by Wi-Fi all that information directly to my computer. From inside the house, I can see the water temperature, the ambient temperature, and also know if the carving is finished. But I'm not totally done, because I would like to build a new support for my laser. So after cutting four layers of plywood, I glue them together. But I noticed that even if this will work, the rounds are not perfectly round. And it's only now that I noticed that. This type of motor coupler was not a good idea. Because of this, the x-axis is all messed up. I don't have any problem with the y-axis because I glue the nut at the other end of the threaded rod. Now I will do the same thing on the x-axis. I bought new couplers that I will eventually receive. But for now, this plaster has to do the trick. After sending the inside of my new laser support, I can try it. Since this is perfect, I can screw the actual laser support in front of the new one. Now it's time to try the laser. This works really, really well. I like it. But when I try to make a test with my fourth axis, I have big problems. Yes, the bit went through the carving and I'm left with a bunch of burnt wood dust. All this because, like I said before, the brass nut I used stripped. It lost all its threads. Here you can see them better. But at this point, I said to myself, ah, this may just be a random failure. So I used another one and it happened again. But this time around, I damaged my table on top of the router bit. And here again, it's obvious that the nut stripped. This must be the reason why the original was made out of plastic. I ordered some and I'm waiting to receive them. But before it broke, I still had time to make it work for a good 36 hours. And I made this wooden egg. I'm pretty sure you noticed that each time I sculpted something, I used my new favorite router bit. Yes, the Fraser Tool Company from Italy graciously gave me this router bit so I can try it. Right out of the box, I fell in love with it. This is a router bit covered with a special protection which makes it work for a longer time. I made over 200 hours of sculpture before I broke it in my last adventure. Here you can see it closer. This is a real jewel if you want to sculpt with your CNC. They also gave me this promo code so you can have a 20% reduction on your first purchase. They also have quite a few more shapes of router bits that you can use on your CNC machine. And the shipping is super fast even here in America. Now you have a better idea of what to do and what not to do if you want to modify your CNC machine. And you too will be able to print dozens of Christmas ornaments, if that's what you want. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker. Oh.